Now, my last video was on Ashes, and it was just a quick update to remind everyone about the new cosmetics which dropped over and the live AMA. I'm going to be reviewing some of the questions and giving my opinion on this AMA and the questions within it. Do you have any plans to create an OST for certain individual bosses, like their own theme? And the answer was yes. Stephen believes, and I agree too, that the emotional buildup of the soundtrack, the music, it's like sets the scene. And I 100% agree with him there. It is very important. Not necessarily all bosses have to have their own individual soundtracks, but it does make it more immersive and more unique. Now the next question is on the summoner, and it's about how the summoner will interact with the other archetypes. So that means like when you augment the summoner to be like a warrior or a tank. So just to summarize our part of the answer, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to allocate points into specific summons that are more, let's say, DPS, heals, or tankish than some of the other summons. And the same is with the augments. It's going to be versatile because you can spec into DPS, you can spec into tank, you can spec into healing more, and maybe you've got different summons for different situations. So you're really going to be quite versatile in dungeons and PvE content and PvP and, and all that. So for this next question, how extensive will the gambling be? Just tavern games or gambling halls? And will it be done with gold or will there be an alternative currency specifically for gambling? Now the answer to this question was quite interesting. So we'll talk about the, f the second question in within this question, which is tavern games or gambling halls. It wasn't mentioned whether there's gambling halls or not, but it was obviously mentioned as it has been before that it, these games will be able to be played within taverns. Now the third question here, and will it be done with gold or an alternative currency specifically for gambling? They're not quite sure, they have considered the idea of using just the normal currency, whether it's gold or whatever the currency is. They have thought of having a specific currency for gambling, where you can actually go and hand in this currency which you earn from your games to a separate cosmetic store specifically for these tokens or this alternative currency, and you will be able to purchase the cosmetics. Now whether they are going to go ahead with that alternative currency or just normal gold, it's not sure. There was an interesting thing said about the alternative currency, how like every month or so there's like a leaderboard and whoever does the best on that leaderboard, you earn more of that currency. It's like a mini tournament, I guess you could say, within the gambling games. So that, I thought that was very interesting. But now moving on to the first question, which will now be the last within this question, is how extensive will gambling be? Now, all of this is not 100% confirmed, but he thinks it would be quite cool if you go out into the world and maybe you beat a dungeon or you find a chest or something like that and you loot it and you get a game. And then what you can do is, now you've got this game, so you can go into a tavern in any city or town or whatever. You can set up a table and you can place your game. And now this incentivizes the social interactions. Okay, now this question. Will there be difficult content that is made for the more hardcore fan base for a challenging experience and perhaps cosmetic rewards? So this isn't talking about will all the content be difficult, it's talking about will there be separate content which is difficult. And the answer we got was that in these dungeons and instances and raids, there will be scaling, but it's not just going to be like adding on health because Steven and lots of other people think it's boring, as I do too. It's not very interesting. It's, oh, I've got to fight and click these buttons in this sequence for another three minutes or something like that because I'm doing it quicker or because I'm a higher level or I've got more people. But what the scaling is going to be is it's going to be, I'm assuming that's going to be a base level of the dungeon. So let's say a dragon dungeon with fire monsters in sight. And if you can't do the dungeon, well, you're not high enough level or you're not good enough. But let's say you've got more people. So let's say it's a d dungeon designed for eight people and you've got 12 people in there. So now you're doing it quicker. You're clearing it quicker than what the dungeon expects you to do to clear the dungeon. So now maybe the monsters get a rage bonus or a, a recovery bonus to their health or power, uh, mana, sorry. And now it's not just their health, but they've got these effects on them, which is making it harder because you're doing it quicker and you're, you're making it easier than what the dungeon and the AI and the behavioral trees are expecting. And this is quite cool because most of the instances I've played in, in an MMO have just been, oh, we're just going to put some extra health on. And it's not really that exciting. It doesn't really keep you coming back. Nothing keeping you there to grind that dungeon or that instance for those rewards, cosmetic or not. Moving on to the next question now, and it is, 
Can you share or tell us anything new about the development of Orc races, particularly the VEC? Later on in this year, you'll probably start to see some of the Orc races and the VEC. And he also mentioned, which I'm quite interested about this next point, is that once you start to see the VEC, you're going to start to see all the other races as well, because once they start to develop one of the races, they're looking to start to develop all of the races and really ramp that up and get it closer to what they want the final game to be. Now, in terms of the actual appearance, there is going to be a vast contrast between the VEC, who are these stargazing astronomy people, and the Renkai, who are big buffed people who are more into the military aspects. Now, yes, like I just said, the Renkai, they will be big buffed orcs, and the Vec, they, they won't be as big. They're going to be more goblinoid, like a goblin, so they, they'll be smaller, they'll have a different animation because they, they might be hunchback, I don't know, maybe a few of them, I think that'd be cool. They will look different, and we have seen some concept art of them and of their buildings already, and later on in the year we'll, we'll see more, so look forward to that. This next question is quite a good question. How will you stop the big mafia guilds from owning all the good dungeons and world bosses by camping them? This is quite an interesting question, and the answer is quite interesting too. Now, there's multiple things that are most likely going to stop one big Mafia guild from owning all the dungeons and camping world bosses. One of those things is the actual world size. With the node system, dungeons will come up as a node levels up, something will pop up, a new dungeon. This, you know, creates something else that maybe the Mafia guilds don't know about. Or there's now there's extra uh, dungeons for them to go and camp and take all the loot from and they don't have enough members now, or maybe it's too far away. Now, talking about world bosses, they will be variant timers on the world bosses, so they might not come back every so often, which will lead for difficulties for these people to just camp the world bosses and kill anyone who comes close or anything like that. It will be hard. There are also many things to almost drive people into and lead them into, and Stephen's given multiple examples, such as religion or guilds, not necessarily play guilds, but like uh, thieves guilds and scholars guilds and these kinds of guilds. There is also maybe people running for mayor or other community things like in taverns, um, when you go quest, uh, and citizenship. All these things are going to contribute to conflicts and challenges for the Mafia Guild. It's not just going to be simple. Now, th there could also be people, maybe a split from the Mafia Guild, maybe half the people go and kill the other half while they're camping the dungeon and take the loot. And now this other half has sided with the rest of the people siding against the Mafia guilds. But I think that the tales and the stories that are going to come from all the people coming together or, you know, maybe like a backstabbing within the Mafia guild, they're going to be quite cool. They're going to be fun. It's going to be something that's enjoyable to listen to. The next question. What is your opinion on expansions making all previous content obsolete and effectively reducing the amount of meaningful content as opposed to expanding it? Through the node system, which is a core, core system, probably the core system, it's going to help keep the starting areas and areas surrounding that and surrounding big places still relevant when new expansions drop. But let's say, for instance, a new island spawns and it's down south. Now let's say you're to the east of it. Yes, you're probably going to want to go explore that and see what is there, but there's still going to be content which you're going to want and have to probably come back for in other areas of the world that aren't in that new expansion. He gives examples such as the artisans, the gathering, the crafting. and Now, for lots of starting players, often in MMOs, you come into a game and let's say it's not the start, it's not the launch of the game. You come into the starting and there's no one around you because the core population, which is now a lot higher level, they've all moved to where the new content is. While yes, you still have to do the questing in any game almost, unless you buy a boost, but in Ashland Creation there won't be that boosting because you're going to have to put in the time and you're going to have to get accustomed to the game and the world that you're in. Now, what's happening in Ashland Creation is there are, gonna, there are these divine gateways, which is your spawning, your starting location when you enter the world. Now, there's multiple nodes which are all unleveled around you, and as you level up one, it increases its, its zone of influence, and it effectively takes over other nodes. Let's say in a month, the max level is 50, the core population, let's say 35 or 30 maybe is an average of that core population. 
Now what's going to be happening is surrounding these gateways, there's going to be built up areas because as the launch of the game happens, players are going to want to level close. They're not going to want to travel across the ocean. As you get into a game, you're going to accept quests. You're going to want to start getting that XP and to get ahead of players. And now what's this going to do is this is going to level those zones. Considering this, now when a new player in, let's say, five months joins the game for the first time, nearby, there's going to be something which is built up. There's going to be people in there and there's going to be social interactions with these people. It's going to be like a hub of social interactions, of questing, of all of this. And it's going to be close by to where these new people are. But it's going to be near to some low-level areas which they can quest. And they can come back to the higher-level area. He also mentioned things such as community quests. And you're not going to feel alone once you join a game. Let's say you start your third or your second character. You're not just going to feel like, oh, there's nothing to do. I just got to go do these quests. It's just going to be a grind and it's going to be boring. Yes, it will take time and yes, it will probably be a grind. But you're going to have those interactions of partying up, communicating with your guild and maybe making a new guild, finding some other people who are new to questing or taking your loot and your gear from the quest you did at a low level, maybe going to that nearby high level area and selling it or repairing your gear or something like that. It's going to be not obsolete for the new players. Now, this is quite a long AMA. If you did enjoy this content, then please do consider liking, subscribing, or commenting. It really does help me out, and just something as small as hitting one button can really make someone's day. If you haven't created an Ashes account yet, it is free. You don't have to pay anything. It's just to create an account for when you do start that subscription, you've got it. And since it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. You can use my link or my code to create your account. And you do have to do it before you create. You can't make an account and then use the code. What this actually does is it gives a small percentage of what you spend uh, to the person who referred you.